everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review, and we're gonna go straight into the mess. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and join the madness. Our social media is in the description box, Discord link in the box also as well. We're gonna go straight into this review. The movie that we review today is Labyrinth, another film that I have not seen since I was a wee little child, so my memory of this film was very, 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 very hazy up until watching it. There were some scenes in this film that I actually remembered, but a lot of the film I did not remember because of the fact that either I was very young when I watched this film, or I just only seen this film once and it got overshadowed by all the other Batman and Land Before Time and Transformers and Spider-Man shit that got thrown away. So, let's get into the numbers before we get into everything else. Critics rate this film a 7.5 out of 10. Audiences rate this film an 8.6 out of 10. Kind of a flip-flop with the uh, score numbers when it comes to uh, like Gremlins comparing it to. The budget of the film was $25 million and they boxed off its back $34 million. I kind of did some like research a little bit. I figured why this uh, movie didn't really get... Oh, sorry. Moving the cat didn't really get that much uh, box office numbers because it was a book before it came out as a movie so that could be why it didn't get that much traction when it came to box office sales but rating wise it did great. Uh, some comments before the film. David Bowie who plays the um, Goblin King, I almost said Pumpkin King, that's the wrong movie, has an Annie Sicoria, I'm pronouncing that wrong probably, which means one people bigger than the other. So, for those who probably have not seen Labyrinth, but have no idea who David Bowie is, that is not a contact. That is a legit eye condition he has, so, fun fact. He obviously helped out with the soundtrack of this film because of his musical career. And Sarah's house, the main protagonist of this film, looks like a modified version of The Exorcist Home. Pros and cons, I'll go through cons, so I can zip through these pretty quick. Uh, her attitude kind of sucks in the very beginning, Sarah's. It's a typical teenage attitude. It could have been just because of the cheesiness of the film, but it felt very over the top, like, just not good, bad. Also, just like, I kind of just want to jump through the screen and slap her in the face and told her to <laughs> straighten her shit out. The viewers may have a hard time understanding the film or have trouble following the, the story without reading the book beforehand. Again, like I said, I have very little memory when it comes to this film. I do remember seeing parts of it, but it's just there's been so much stuff crammed into this brain like some stuff just goes out the window like it doesn't exist but I have not read the book so that probably didn't help at all um, but definitely definitely uh, for a first time viewer I would say find the book read it first and then watch the film that way it might help so you can compare with one better I feel like Sarah when it comes to traveling through the labyrinth she would naturally be terrified of her surroundings, but I guess since she has read the Labyrinth book over and over again, she's calm and collected and knows what's going on. Calm and collected are kind of like the wrong choice of words. Probably slightly panicked, but just trying to get shit done. Just trying to get straight to the point. But, if it were me in that situation, I wouldn't feel like, oh, hi, how's it going? You're just a random goblin that I just met today. You're my friend now. CGI wasn't used a lot in this film. It was not. But when it was, it was very iffy, but again, I'm not going to hate on that CGI too much because of this film. Because again, time periods are the pros of the film. I thought there was some costume work when it came to all the creatures and everything, but nope, it was all puppetry. I had to do some research on that, and I was just like, that's pretty impressive when it comes to that many <laughs> creatures for puppet work. I figured at least there was at least one or two that had to be a costume one, but I guess... No. The fact that like the characters knew Sarah through the book and everything, it added to her knowing what was kind of going on, knowing what characters to go to, and it kind of felt like that the characters had the same connection she did with the book because she's read it so many times, trying to memorize the lines, I guess. I don't know why she's trying to remember memorizing the lines. I don't know if it's for a play or if she's just bored. Speaking of straight to the point, this, this movie just goes straight into it, no bullshit, just goes gets it done and over with. I feel like in a current time period, a little backstory and a little bit of extra stuff would help a film like this, but for what the film as it is, it's perfect with it being straight to the point, no bullshit. Uh, the 80s 
synthwave like soundtrack always gets a big positive thumbs up when it comes to that. I like the optical illusions throughout the films and everything, and all the lessons that were learned throughout the film. After that, I kind of just stopped taking notes. And usually when I stop taking notes during the film, one of two things have happened. Either one, I stopped taking notes because I actually started enjoying the story and wanted to pay attention and figure out what happened. Or two, it was so boring, absolutely fucking hated it, I wanted to mentally die. Good thing is, I actually enjoyed this film. And I want to know what was going on. Overall, as a like a final score, Labyrinth is de definitely a film that can take you back to the 80s, take you down this like adventure, and figure out like the mysteries of like the Labyrinth and like the lessons that you learn throughout the story. Very adventurous story esque. Just like I would cha probably change maybe like the CGI bit and. Maybe a couple kinks here and there, nothing nothing too notable to like really say on the camera. But overall, I would say this film gets an 8.5 out of 10. Definitely a good film to watch. And again, I'm still not remembering. I remember watching this film as a kid. I don't have any memories of it for some reason, but I remember watching it. Damn it, Batman. <laughs> But, that is all the time I have for this film. This is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review, and I am sending it.